right here is an $18,000 mountain bike. We're gonna look at this, but first we're gonna go back to where you start in mountain biking, and that's in that sub $500 range. So for just over $500, you get the Trek 820. This bike is gonna be harder and harder to find because Trek is no longer producing this one, but there's still some around. With it, you get 21 gears, front suspension with 100 mils of travel, and basic rim brakes. A bike like that is gonna get you on the trails and riding pretty much everywhere but you will be limited to how fast you're going, how hard of a hit you can take, how big of a drop you can do, and overall performance in braking, shifting, and suspension will be limited. Get out there and ride, but that's all you're getting for about $600. The next bike on Trek's list is the Trek Marlin series. This starts at the four and goes all the way up to the eight. This one here is the Trek Marlin six at just about $1,100 and you are looking at a one by drivetrain system. So this is definitely the more preferred drivetrain system for all mountain bikes. You get one gear on the front, 10 on the back. That's so much simpler for actually riding, operating the bike, just everything happening while you're mountain biking. It makes it that much easier. You do get a bit more suspension travel and overall better performance suspension, some options to lock it out. And in most models, you will go to a hydraulic disc brake. With some of the higher end ones like the Trek Marlin 8, you will also get the 12 speed drivetrain, which is a big improvement. Otherwise, a nice, simple, clean looking bike is gonna perform a lot better. Next, we're looking at the Trek Roscoe. The Roscoe line starts at about $1,500 and goes all the way up to this model here, which is $3,500 Canadian dollars. With the Trek Roscoe line, you are getting that fast drivetrain system again, all the way up to very high end ones. This one here has that 12 speed from Shimano. It's a Dior XT, very, very fast shifting, very reliable. So in the rougher, more overwhelming courses, this is gonna perform really well. You also get tubeless tires in most models. So that means they remove the inner tube out of it and you're able to just straight out of the box, ride this with just a fluid to help stop all small punctures and it will help stop unnecessary pinch flats from happening. Brakes on these ones have been improved so you will get much more power out of the hydraulic disc brakes, much more stopping power and overall better performing brakes throughout the entire ride experience. Other features every single model comes with are the dropper post. This is a must have, honestly. Once you get the dropper post, it makes riding bikes so much easier. Any downhill technical, more difficult section, and this is definitely a lifesaver. Suspension on the models has also been increased, geometry changed. So as you're going up levels in bike, you will get better performance suspension. It will just handle the harder hits better, turns better, won't flex as much, and this will perform better for you. As well, the geometry of the bike has tweaked, so it's gonna go downhill in a better, easier direction. Now we're really getting into it. We have seen a $600 option, we've seen a 1,000, we've seen a $3,000 option. Now we are looking at a $4,000 option mountain bike. With this in the Fuel X line from Trek, you are finally getting that full suspension. So you're getting the rear end suspension. It's gonna add a lot of comfort, squishiness, and, and overall it's gonna be more pleasant to ride. It also increases performance in the braking because the back wheel is under more effective pressure and isn't getting bounced off, so you will get better braking in the back end. This will be an easier bike to ride. Any full suspension is gonna be easier on any rougher, more downhill terrain. With the new Fuel EXs, especially you are getting more updated mountain bike parts. So the seat posts are getting thicker, stronger, all still with that dropper seat post as well. It's gonna perform really, really well. Generally, they start coming with longer and longer dropper posts, if possible, depending on the model. Tubeless tires, again, with more aggressive treading stronger rims come stock. Everything now is becoming a mountain bike specific ride. Whereas previous models are kind of 50-50, the Roscoe line is definitely more mountain bike but still relatively comfortable riding around town. This one is a mountain bike. With the new Fuliex series, the five is similar to previous years, so check out those videos. But the seven and higher are going to a new generation and they're adding internal storage so you can actually put things inside the frame of your bike you're able to store tools, tubes, anything you may need to go for a ride instead of taking it on you, and it's a good storage location. The brakes are gonna be as good or better than the previous versions with bigger disc rotors which can prevent brake fade and overall give you better performance. Everything about these bikes is designed to ride trails. It's gonna be better downhill 
the geometry is tweaked so you're going to be able to attack harder, more aggressive lines and perform really well over it and overall make it easier to ride. That's really the goal, easier and easier for the rider to go over the more tricky, more technical areas. At this point, we've kind of settled off with all the parts we need. Now from here, we start getting bougie and we're adding the carbon fiber from there and now we're going to see what these really high-end bikes look like. Next up, we've got the bougie bikes. Obviously now we pass that $5,000 price point and we're going to the six, seven, eight thousand, even $9,000 price point. The big improvements those bikes are seeing is leaving behind the world of metal and going to a carbon fiber. So these bikes become extremely lightweight, but also they become much stronger. And that is a bigger benefit of carbon than even the lightweightness. You can have a 35 pound carbon fiber bike, but strength wise, you're gonna get so much better durability and impact resistance. This goes for wheels and frame. All of that will become better at taking hits as opposed to denting or potentially cracking like aluminum would. This here is the Top Fuel 9.8. So it does come in at about 25, 26 pounds. Relatively lightweight, let's say, for the amount of travel these new models have. You get much faster, more responsive dropper posts to them. So they're able to respond faster and act better. The brakes become more adjustable so you're able to actually dial in the reach and feel of them. They also add little texture points to them so they're going to be better to ride and feel better under even normal situations. Shifting at this point is again high end. It's going to be fast, reliable. Doesn't actually get that much better than where the $3,000 hardtails were or the $3,000 hardtails or the five dollars $6,000 full suspension aluminum models. but braking definitely improves. You start with getting better calipers, better braking rotors, everything there down in the lower section is now gonna be better as well as that upper section for better braking performance under more load. Wheels get much stronger, much stiffer. There's less flex in them. So when you are actually riding hard and going down hills and really hammering corners, it will not flex as much and it will perform so much better as well going to that carbon fiber rim, like I said, is much more durable. If you've not seen the Danny McCaskill videos of him testing the reserve wheels from Santa Cruz, you can put these things through way more than an aluminum rim would before they fail. You still get pretty much all the same features previous, just everything is better. So internal storage, better cranks, better every, everything is better on these bikes. All right, so we've gone all the way up the stepping stones now. We are back to kind of the ridiculous bikes. We have seen a $600 bike, a $1,000 bike, 3,000 and now up to a $9,000 carbon fiber bike. What is after that? So you have a few little levels in between and then the big changes happen. Realistically, you're gonna top out around Fourteen to sixteen thousand dollars for a bike without an electric motor. Then come the e-bikes. All right, so we are back where we started with an eighteen thousand dollar mountain bike. There's a couple of changes here which have added the value a huge amount. One, this is an electric bike. This is the Rail Nine Point Nine. This one does have that Bosch electric motor to a big battery in it. Probably value somewhere around the $3,000 mark to have that set up. Obviously it's built in the bike. It's not an add-on feature you can add to a regular bike, but still it adds that dollars up. Next, they've upgraded the dropper post to the highest end or potentially one of the most expensive ones anyway, with an electronic wireless dropper post. This one runs off a dedicated Wi-Fi network, battery powered, rechargeable, which that battery also works down in the derailleur, which is also electronic and wireless, all powered by SRAM's Eagle Axis drivetrain system. It's ridiculous how fast it shifts. It is like clicking a button on a computer mouse. Everything just works outstandingly. Brakes, suspension, all those features again are improved to become the most efficient they can, the lightest weight they can, the most powerful they can, all to find that right balance of strength to weight ratio and comfort while riding. This bike is a beast. It will really tackle pretty much anything you take at it and it will perform fantastic. On top of all that kind of basic stuff, the suspension itself has Bluetooth sensors in it. So it actually detects the pressures within it, ensuring you're always at the most optimal riding pressures for what you're doing. 
tire whiz, which does the same for the tire pressures. So you can just simply walk up to your bike, open an app, and it will tell you whether it's ready to go or not on all battery charges, tire whiz, shock whiz, axis batteries, everything. Turn it on, you'll get to see your Bosch levels and everything will be ready to go, custom for you, built for you, and it looks fantastic. So we're gonna do a full review on the Trek Rail 9.9, but you have just seen what it takes to make an $18,000 mountain bike. They work the same, they operate the same, they still pedal in a forward motion, but you are paying a lot of money for a lot of features, and this barely covers what changes as well. Internally, bearings, all that kind of stuff. There's more of them, they're better quality, more sealed, everything like that improves from a $600 bike to a $18,000 bike. Let me know down in the comments below what price your bike's at and if you think it should be worth that. Has inflation gone crazy? I don't even know. All right, that was a good one. Uh, subscribe or I'll, um, subscribe or I'll put a puncture in your tire next time. I'm just kidding.